All right, what's up guys? I recently did a video uh, about some of my thoughts on bodybuilding training and I got a really great response. So over the next couple of months, I'm going to expand on those thoughts because I do think they're pretty unique. And I think they're things that can help you to improve your own training and to get better results if you are focused on hypertrophy. So we're actually gonna start out by taking a step back and returning to one of the first lessons in the Unfuck Your Programming series which dealt with your body's response to training. And I wanna start there because I think that you need to understand this theory in order to not only understand how your body is going to respond each time you train, but also in order to understand how to structure your training, your diet, your recovery, your supplements, how everything kind of works together in order to help you to improve at the optimal rate. So the kind of theory that we're going to use throughout this discussion is called uh, general adaptation syndrome. And it's a theory that explains basically your body's response to anything, honest, honestly, anything that kicks it out of homeostasis, which is your normal pattern, right? Where your body feels comfortable. And I'm sure you guys are used to this. If you try gaining or losing weight, your body kind of wants to stay where it is. The same goes for, you know, things like if you get sick or, uh, you know, if you don't, even if you don't sleep enough, um, your body adapts over time. So with this particular context, right, in training, we want to understand what happens when we train and then what happens when we recover and how can we change those things to work to our benefit. So that's what this lesson is going to be about. Okay, so I have here a chart that shows more or less how general adaptation syndrome works. We're going to look at each phase of this chart and I'm going to explain that so you can understand what's going on and then I'm going to talk about how you can use this information to improve your training. So you start out at homeostasis, right? That's you're chilling on the couch talking to YouTube and then your initial stimulus, that's a training session. So uh, yesterday I had a really hard training session. I was doing stiff-legged deadlifts against bands and for about six hours after that training session I couldn't even think straight. Uh, and then this morning I'm still I'm feeling kind of beat up. That's the alarm phase. And I'm sure you guys have all experienced this after a hard training session, you feel pretty run down. If you train during the alarm stage, you're going to underperform expectations, right? You're not going to be able to lift as much, as heavy, as hard, whatever, as you were able to a little while ago. Obviously, we don't want to do that. We don't want to run ourselves into the ground. And pretty shortly after the alarm stage occurs, you're going to go into the resistance stage where your body you know, starts to heal itself. And if you guys have had even introductory biology classes, you know that when you train with weights, with any sort of resistance, your, your muscle tissues break down a little bit and then your body re heals those muscles, repairs them, and actually they, they're repaired even bigger and stronger than they were before. So that's occurring during the resistance stage. But if you look at the chart, you'll see that, you know, that little red line, you're still below homeostasis. What that means is if you train again during the resistance stage, you're still going to underperform, even though you might not feel like crap just yet. What you want to do is wait until the super, compens super compensation phase, which is C, where you can see the red line is actually above homeostasis. If you train during this time, you're going to be able to do more than you could the previous session. And that's what we want, obviously, right? We want to be able to lift more weight. We want to wait until our muscles are bigger than they were before we started uh, training in the first place, before we train again, before we break them down again, etc. Now, if we wait too long, then we go into detraining. And again, we go below that level of homeostasis. So it's a balancing act. You have, to tr you have to train, you have to wait long enough for your body to repair itself, and then you have to train again before your body kind of gets stale and starts to detrain. And that learning that timing can be a little bit tricky, and we'll get in that get into that in future episodes. For now though, I wanna talk about how we can kind of adjust each one of these phases based on our own individual needs and abilities. So I'm gonna start out this part of, the, part of the episode by talking about, you know, kind of the elephant in the room, which is performance enhancing drugs. I think the misconception that a lot of people have is that you can train harder, longer, more frequently, whatever, when you're using performance enhancing drugs. And then honestly, you can get away with that, but it's not optimal. And general adaptation syndrome helps us explain why. So performance enhancing drugs generally increase muscle protein synthesis. 
What that means is when you're in the super compensation phase, your body is going to produce more muscle, essentially, right? So it would look something like this. When you're on PEDs, you still have that same alarm and resistance stage, but when you enter the super compensation phase, you're gonna see you actually get more out of your training. Now, obviously it's more complicated than that, but I think for most people, if you understand this, you're going to be able to use your PEDs more effectively because you're not gonna to try to change your training, assuming your training is optimal in the first place. Instead, you're just gonna realize you're getting more out of every training stage, right? Every training session. And so you're going to fuel your body better, more appropriately to get more muscle, right? So that would be taking in more calories, taking in more protein, things like that. So, how can we change those alarm and resistance stages? Because we can do it. Well, that's where recovery comes in. First of all, I wanna be upfront, some of this is genetic. Some people recover faster than others. Some people naturally have shorter alarm and resistance stages. But there are other things that we can do, right? When we improve our sleep, when we improve our diet, when we do our you know, cardio for health, all these things are going to decrease the length of the alarm and resistance stages. So you are going to be able to train more often, right? And so that looks like this. Your alarm stage, super compensation. And you can see, this is kind of a dramatic example, but we can actually get double the number of training sessions in, in the same amount of time. And you can see, we're gonna produce more benefit over the same period of time, okay? So that's why it's so important to really nail down all those other factors, right? It's important to get your eight hours sleep. It's important to make sure you hit your protein goals. It's important to make sure you hit your step count. And all of that is so that you can train more frequently and experience more episodes of muscle growth. Now, I've kind of been skirting around this, but ob the obvious question is, well, where does training come into play? Because obviously that initial stimulus is what sets all of this in motion. And so that's a really big topic and it's something that I'm gonna explain in the next few episodes but the way that we structure our training, not only for individual sessions, but throughout our training career, can affect our performance in the long run if we can structure that training in order to get the most out of our supercompensation phases and in order to minimize our alarm and resistance phases.